Hi, my name is Tzachi Levent Levy, and I'm here to break down real-time communications so you don't have to. This time, let's focus on the anatomy of WebRTC application. Let's see what we have. So, in a WebRTC application, the first thing that we have is the client side. That client side can be a laptop, it can be a PC, a browser, usually in there, but also a native application. It can also be a mobile device or any other embedded device that I want to embed WebRTC into. We're not limited in what it is that we can do. Now on the server side, we've got a bit more complexity there. Let's start. The first thing that we're going to have in a WebRTC application is the application server. The application server has nothing to do with WebRTC, at least not directly. This is where you store the logic of your application, what it is that you're going to do, the user base, the preference, everything else that you have within your application. Usually what we're going to have is also an additional signaling server. The signaling server is where we're going to find the users and negotiate with one another. We're going to send SDP messages, the session description protocol messages between the users using that signaling servers. It can be a single server, it can be a multiple server. At times we're going to even you know, compound it within the application server and have them both coexist together. Remember that in WebRTC, signaling is also not something that is part of WebRTC, but something that you're going to decide. I've got videos about that, you can check them out. The next set of servers that we have are the Natraversal servers. These are also known as I servers, and they are TURN and STAN. STAN allows us to know what our public IP address is, and TURN allows us to relay media through that turn server. Last but not least is the media server. This is a category of servers that is not in existence within the standard itself, but it is part of almost every application that I see that uses WebRTC. It's there to handle group calling, recording, gateway to other types of services that don't use WebRTC, and many other chores that you need to achieve with WebRTC. When you build a WebRTC application, you can decide which ones of these you're going to create on your own, use open source, use a commercial solution, or even go for a managed hosted service used by others. You can do it per type of media server, per type of server, but also you can do that across everything by using a CPAS vendor. If you want to 10x your development efforts and do that with an improvement in the media quality and connectivity of your application, reach out to me, I'm here to help. You can also follow me at blogic.me.